We're here with Dr. Nicholas Vaughn. Uh, Nicholas is a veterinarian with a little bit of a twist. He is an MBA also. Today we're here to talk with Nick a little bit about the importance of nutrition in veterinary medicine. How are you? I am doing fantastic. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, so Nick, the first thing we wanted to know is um, how do you tell a good quality pet food? As a veterinarian as well, this is a question I get nonstop, whether it's in the exam room, whether it's in front of students, and working for a large company, um, it can work both ways for you. I mean, obviously, they want to know why your pet food is so good and what makes you so great, but then at the end of the day, what just makes pet food great in general? Mm -hmm. I think some of the things that I look for, uh, and there's a lot of companies that do this, but mainly you want to make sure that they take their products, test those products, on actual animals. And when I say test, that word kind of gets meant sometimes, but for the most part it just means that you've actually trialed these products on actual animals so that the end consumer has something that they can depend on and, and trust. But the average consumer walking through the grocery store looking mm -hmm. at the entire array of uh, choices, what can they do? When it comes down to it, quality ingredients quality ingredients okay. so there's I mean it gets very specific when you go down that road too because cats are a little bit different than dogs mm -hmm. and of course everybody today for whatever reason I don't know if it's the internet I don't know if it's they're just talking about it at coffee circles but they're really concerned about grains mm -hmm. everybody's like oh if it's got grains and it's no good it's not for dogs it's not for cats Is that not true? that's completely untrue mm -hmm. I mean it couldn't be any more false now that being said there's a different quality of grains just as much as there's different quality of proteins as well. And grains can provide protein. Grains okay. can provide other things. So let me go back to a point that you, you mentioned earlier that there's different kinds of foods for dogs versus cats. What are those differences? Well, they do have different nutritional needs, of course. Okay. Uh, and when you break down proteins to their smallest uh, factors, they're called um, amino acids. And cats require different amino acids than dogs do first and foremost. But then the level of protein requirement is different in the dog versus the cat. Cats require a whole lot more protein because of their enzyme system than dogs do. So there's those differences and there's very specific differences. The one thing we know for sure that everybody says in vet school now, cats are not small dogs. Yes. And, it's, and it's very true. Oh, that's great. Um, you remember several years ago, uh, there was a scare with melamine. Yes. And everyone got very concerned very. that we had this toxin that was in dog food and was causing dogs to get sick and then, yeah. and, and many of them died. Yes, um, so unfortunately, yes. One of the things that I know that's resulted in, and I've got friends who refuse to feed their dogs commercial diets. Uh, is that a good thing? Let me, let me explain that a little bit because it is interesting. Okay. Melamine was very serious. We had a task force when we first heard about this, and actually the pet food industry are the ones that discovered it. For pet food manufacturers, their business model is to produce a quality pet food. Their goal is to make sure these pets live as long as possible. And the issue is, for the most part, because when you have commercial pet foods, everybody gets lumped together. You know, all the different companies get lumped into one big thing. This is commercial pet food. It's a kibble. It can't be trusted, so on and so forth. We're gonna try the raw diets. We're going to try these diets that cost $80 a bag because they provide this and this. Well, let's talk a little bit about those um, raw diets. Mm -hmm. um, is, is that something, as, as someone interested in nutrition in general, yes. is that something that can be um, a good thing or a bad thing for your pet? Well, you know what? I think with anything, when you have a paradigm shift, uh, th there's some problems with it that can occur along the way. I'm not going to say that raw food diets are not great. Okay. I think they're in their infancy as far as discovering how we should use them and the safety precautions because of that. Uh, a lot of times when you have raw food diets, a lot of uh, the individuals that are using those are finding that information off the internet. There's not a lot of nutritionists weighing in on that and you can pretty much put anything out there that you want as long as you believe it and you write enough uh, stuff around it, other people get excited about it. I can't say 10 years from now that moving towards raw food diets won't be an interesting venture because there's a big push for on the human side that raw food diets can do all these things with antioxidants etc and when you right. cook you cook some things out so there's no there's never a never as they say so i would hate to say that we'll never look down that path but right now 
you really need to get a veterinarian to help you with that. If that's really what you want to do, if you have the time, you have the energy and you have the money to do a raw food diet, grab a veterinarian to help you along with that because if it goes unrefereed, you can pick up salmonella, campylobacter, all these other things that can actually be fatal for your pet. And uh, you do definitely, I, when I deal with clients, if they feel anywhere responsible for this pet's downfall, yeah. that's the hardest thing yes. to deal with because you want them to feel like, no, you're a pet owner, you're doing well. Yeah. So it can be challenging. You know, you, you mentioned the fact that uh, dogs have become omnivorous, which means they can eat a wide variety yes. of diets. And again, um, I have a mother and a sister who are vegetarian. <laughs> and um, my sister has asked me, can I feed my dog or can I feed my cat an all vegetarian diet? Well, in some ways, yes. So it's more about the amino acid profile. Uh, there are certain proteins out there that are vegetarian based that we can get by on, but some of them don't have methionine, which is another amino acid, et cetera, et cetera. So mm -hmm. you will be lacking in certain amino acids for pets. I've heard that proper nutrition can also help in disease prevention of other diseases that we wouldn't necessarily think about, like even cancer. Yes. Is that the case, and in, in what way? Well, this, that's kind of a new horizon as far as what we're doing in nutrition. Uh, now we're looking at probiotics and how those can prevent uh, disease processes later on by just uh, boosting the immune system. So probiotics are a form of, you know, if I can just put it in quotes here, yogurt and having nice live bacteria in your small intestine. So it's going to make it through the stomach, get into the intestine. And we're looking at some nice studies that do some beautiful things there. Uh, as far as cancer prevention, yes, a lot of it has to do with quality, again, of the ingredients. And not only that, certain superfoods that can help prevent those diseases later on. A lot of what we do in prescription medicine, uh, when we look at prescription veterinary diets is, well, you have a disease now, whether it's kidney disease, uh, diabetes, osteoarthritis, and how can we alleviate some of those symptoms. It's a diet that you can give to your pet and effectively it changes the genetic coding inside the animal to signal for an entire different byproduct than the one it was making prior. Really? So when you feed a large amount of omega-3 fatty acids to these animals, right, they make less inflammatory mediators or cell signals so you have less inflammation throughout the body. And certainly when you're dealing with uh, arthritis, which is pro-inflammatory disease process, if you can reduce that, essentially you've lowered or slowed down the progression of that disease yes. through nutrition. And we call it, the, the term is now called nutrigenomics, nutrition and genomics. genomics, feeding a certain type of ingredient to affect your DNA protocol and the outcome of that. It's a beautiful thing. Commercial pet food. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating stuff, Nick. Yes, Thank you so much for appearing on Veterinary Spectrum. Well, thank you for inviting me. We appreciate it, and uh, I had a good time. Good.